For this episode, we shall discuss the first part of bank reconciliation which covers its importance, definition of terms, and other subjects like reconciling items, that we need to know to better understand the process involved in it. The purpose of the bank reconciliation first and foremost is to be certain that the company's general ledger cash in bank account is complete and accurate. With the true cash balance reported in the cash account, the company could manage their funds very well to prevent overdrawing its checking account, avoid reporting the wrong amount of cash on its balance sheet, in case of need, be proactive in preparing for their operating requirements, like securing loans in case of an anticipated dip or negative balance in their cash flow. The bank reconciliation also provides a way to detect potential errors in the bank's records and also detects fraud, if any. Let's proceed with the definition of the following terms. Number 1 Bank Reconciliation. This is the process of reconciling the company's cash balance in the monthly bank statement and its general ledger cash in bank account. To accomplish this, the items representing the difference should be identified, analyzed, and classified into two groups number 1 the bank reconciling items, and number 2 the book reconciling items. Number 2 Reconciling Item. This is a difference between balances from two sources, that are being compared, which in this case are the bank statement and the company's general ledger. Number 3 Bank Reconciliation Statement. This is a schedule or summary report prepared by an accountant where the different reconciling items are differences between the cash balance in the bank statement and general ledger of a given period are identified and classified resulting in the reconciliation of the ending balances of the two documents. Number 4 Book Balance. This is the balance of the company's general ledger cash in bank account. Let's assume it is a checking account. Number 5 Bank Balance. This is the cash balance shown on the monthly bank statement. Number 6 Bank Statement. This is the document received by a depositor from a bank which summarizes deposits, other credits, withdrawals, and other debit transactions pertaining to a particular bank account of the depositor. The company may have as many bank accounts as it is allowed to maintain in one or several banks, in which case the company will have as many bank statements as the number of its bank accounts. Number 7 Bank Reconciling Items. These are transactions that are recorded in the company's general ledger cash in bank account but not recorded in the bank statement. Examples are outstanding checks and deposit in transit. Number 8 Outstanding Checks. These are checks issued by the company to its suppliers and or creditors and recorded as a credit to its general ledger but not yet presented to the bank for deposit or encashment by the payee. Number 9 Deposits in Transit. These are cash and checks received and recorded by the company as a debit to its general ledger, for deposit to its own bank account but not yet presented to the bank for deposit or already presented to the bank but not yet credited to the company's bank account usually due to late deposit. Number 10 Book Reconciling Items. These are the transactions that are recorded in the bank statement but not recorded in the company's general ledger. The following are examples of book reconciling items that must be added or debited to the company's general ledger cash in bank account, interest earned, net of withholding tax, proceeds of loan, customers' direct deposit of trade receivables, direct deposits of loan payments by debtors, adjustment of issued checks where the amount recorded per book is higher than the actual check amount which is assumed to be the correct amount, etc. Number 1 Interest Earned. This represents interest earned by the company for its savings, time deposits, and other investments in various bank instruments such as treasury bills if any. This is a book reconciling item, hence, must be added to the company's book balance. The entry to record the transaction is debit cash in bank and credit interest income for the same amount credited in the bank statement within the accounting period. Number 2 Proceeds of Loan The company may sometimes secure loans from their bank, which when approved, the proceeds are usually directly credited to their account. The entry to record the transaction is a debit to the company's general ledger cash in bank account and credit notes payable or other more appropriate account title representing the liability of the company to the bank. Number 3 Direct Deposit Fund Transfer by the Customer Sometimes, customers pay their credit accounts by depositing or transferring funds directly to the company's bank accounts. The entry to record the transaction is to debit the company's general ledger cash in bank account and credit accounts or notes receivable account for that particular customer. Number 4 Direct Deposit Fund Transfer by the Debtor 
Sometimes, the company's debtor, as distinguished from customers, pays its liabilities by depositing or transferring funds directly to the company's bank accounts. The entry to record the transaction is to debit the company's general ledger cash in bank account and credit notes or other receivables account for that particular debtor. Number 5 Adjustments to Checks Though it rarely happens, sometimes a company may occasionally record its issued check incorrectly. When that happens, the company must adjust its book balance to correct the error. The adjusting entry would depend on the error committed. If the amount of the check issued is lower, this is assumed to be the correct amount, than what is recorded by the company, the adjusting entry is debit cash in bank account and credit accounts or notes payable account, or other proper liability account, for the difference of the check amount and the corresponding credit entry in the general ledger cash in bank account.